On behalf of the United Nations African Institute for Economic Development and Planning, I welcome you to the 2022 edition of the Social Policy for Development Planners course. The theme of the 2022 course revolves around an inclusive, resilient and sustainable recovery for the post COVID-19 era. The focus of the course remains on sensitizing development planners to the imperative of social policy in the development planning process. The COVID-19 pandemic highlighted several lessons for social policy and Africa's development that we need to learn for an inclusive, resilient and sustainable recovery post the pandemic. Where there were significant variations in the reported SARS-CoV-2 infection and COVID-19 death rate across regions and countries in Africa. The reported mobility and mortality rate at the end of July 2022 differed across countries and regions of the world. The distribution across the continent was also regional with the Southern African region reporting a higher mobility rate by 100,000 of the population. Botswana reported a cumulative figure of 13,746 per 100,000 of the population. Tunisia reported the highest cumulative mortality rate of 245 per 100,000 of the population. However, Contrary to the predictions that the pandemic will wreak havoc on Africa's healthcare capacity, the continent seems to have been spared the degree of morbidity and mortality witnessed in other parts of the world. The economic growth and welfare impacts tell us a different story. From an average growth rate of 2.6% in 2019, African economies contracted at an average of 2% before recovering to 4.1% in 2021. The welfare implications will seem to outweigh the initial aggregate economic impact of the pandemic with informal economy operatives bearing the worst of the impact. <clears throat> an early study of the South African of South Africa estimated the labor market impact of the pandemic at a quote net 40% net loss in employment, end of quote, with half of this accounted for by terminated employment rather than people being forlorn. A set of national household surveys carried out by Nigeria's National Bureau of Statistics revealed a significant increase in cases of hunger and food insecurity during the pandemic against a baseline of 23% from the household surveys conducted in 2018-2019. The share of households that ran out of food in the 30 days prior to the survey in August 2022, 2020 was 59%, declining to 48% in November 2020. Globally, the third year since the pandemic has witnessed a general recovery in economic activities from a contraction of 3.3% in 2020, a contraction deeper than the 1.3% experience in 20, 2009, to a global recovery of 5.8% in 2021. However, the recovery has been in tandem with supply chain constraints in international trade and rising inflation. For Africa, the latter has been compounded by the adverse food inflation impact of the war in Ukraine much of which is driven by profit-driven speculations on the grains futures market. While in, the, in late July 2020, areas ranging from the United States, Europe, and South Africa experienced slight increase, increases in new infections, it may be possible to speak of a post-pandemic era. It is legitimate to speak of rebuilding better, back better for a post-COVID-19 era for an inclusive, resilient, and sustainable recovery. This flows from the lessons that we can learn from the experience of the pandemic. These lessons are at the intersection of social policy and development, 
with the latter understood as growth with sustainable structural transformation. The first lesson concerns the persisting salience of development and the imperative of industrialization within the context of a resilient and productive national system of innovation. This is a core concern for development planners. From the production of SARS-CoV-2 test testing equipment to creating vaccines against the virus, the pandemic laid bare Africa's weakness in knowledge-based manufacturing capacity and has had to import or depend on other countries for donations of equipment and vaccines. The ecosystem required for sustainable and ecologically viable industrialization requires significant investment in a robust national research capacity and national system of innovation. This requires significant public investment in education across the whole spectrum, from early childhood to, to tertiary level. This is an important domain of the intersection of social policy and development, where social investment in education serves the production task of policy, social policy in enhancing a country's production capacity. The second lesson concerns the informality of the economy that deep, deepened as the deindustrialization of the 1980s or a halt to the industrialization project took hold. It accelerated and expanded precarious modes of economic activities. The effect is that the social protection reach of the state of formal employment has retracted. We are confronted with a vast segment of the economically active labor force that is out of the reach of the state or social insurance institutions. The third lesson connected to the second above concerns the poverty of the post 1980s poverty discourse. The discourse reduced the focus of anti-poverty measures to the alleviation of extreme poverty or destitution. It then constrained the reach of public actions through a targeting mechanism for identifying and reaching the beneficiaries. The residual approach to social protection that has underpinned public policy for more than 30 years rests on the proposition that market is the first port of call for individuals to meet their social provision needs. Only in verifiable cases of inability to meet social needs through the market will public intervention be warranted. To become eligible for public support, the poor must parade their poverty to be eligible. In reality, only a portion of the deserving poor is covered. Even so, social assistance in the form of cash transfer is less than 20% of the consumption need of the targeted poor. What the pub, prevailing public policy orientation of the last three decades installed is a stratified, segmented, and segregated social policy framework. This involves the privileging of the market for social provisioning and the retrainment of the public authorities' social provisioning functions. The result is the re-emergence of a state that thinks of its citizens as a fiscal burden. For a time, public social expenditure ceased to be seen as social investment. It is now a nuisance to the fiscals, one that is grudgingly engaged. In the face of sharp increases in food prices, those receiving social assistance in the form of cash transfer face diminished capacity to meet basic food needs. The fourth lessons concern the need to focus on and address the corrosive levels of inequality, which has grown under the pandemic. The fifth lesson concerns social trust in public institutions as a factor in the society's ability to respond to the pandemic. In low, low trust countries, public health measures such as wearing of masks turn into factitious political contestations. Countries with high trust demonstrated the collective investment in other regarding factors, such as the public health measures introduced to control the pandemic. 
social policy with the task of social cohesion offers an insight into nurturing citizens' compact with the state that allows for citizens to trust public authorities and facilitate the other regarding mindset. The final lesson concerns the importance of a careful and prudent management of the economy that provides the fiscal headspace to accommodate the increased costs of supporting livelihood and mitigation measures of containing external shocks, such as the pandemic. On the garden, all the above is a robust social policy architecture that ensures that we leave no one behind. The primary question frames the social policy for development planners course, namely, in the context of development, what questions do we ask of social policy? How do we think of social policy in a way that is supportive of the project of structural transformation of economy and society? How do we think of social policy in such context, one that delivers on socially inclusive and leaves no one behind? How do we think of and design a social policy architecture that works in tandem with economic development and makes development socially inclusive and ecologically sustainable? How in the process do we build back for an inclusive, resilient, and sustainable post-COVID era? To achieve the above objectives, the course is organized around 10 modules. The modules range from an introduction to the principles and political economy of development planning, to social policy, to typologies of social policy, to social protections, to a comparative analysis of social policy in the context of development that focuses on the East Asian experience, to transformative social policy, the financing of social policy, and then a vehicle for monitoring and evaluation of social policy, social development, among others. At the end of the course, we expect that you as the participants will have acquired a, a robust understanding of history, diversity, and conceptual underpinnings of social policy. B, a healthy appreciation for the interconnection between economic and social policy and economic de development objectives and social development outcomes. C, a full appreciation of the value of integrated and holistic public policy making. D, an understanding and appreciation of the multidimensionality of social policy instruments and social policy functions, including how social policy instruments produce multiple outcomes. E, a robust capacity to design social policy instruments for implementation. F, skills for assessing and evaluating computing social policy instruments, their strengths and limitation. G, strong skills in the assessment and evaluation of social development outcomes using the African Social Development Index. H, improve knowledge of social policy in the international compact to meet the SDGs and Agenda 2063, and I, tackling social policy within the context of a post, you know, uh, um, COVID era. Again, on behalf of EDEP, I welcome you to the 2022 Social Policy for Development Planners course. We trust that you that you 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 find your time at the on your time at the online uh, course rewarding and fulfilling. Thank you. <laughs>